my dear viewers welcome to my youtube channel today in this episode i shall discuss about a transition line and its faults and its protection by using directional overcurrent and earth fault relay before starting this video i have an appeal to you my dear viewers please subscribe to this channel share and comment on it now please watch Please watch how generated power of a fixed voltage after being stepped up and then stepped down at different voltages transmitted from generating station to the consumers of requiring different voltage power by using transmission and distribution lines. Please watch the picture. At the picture, we shall distinguish transmission lines from distribution lines. Here, there are 220 kV, 132 kV, 33 kV, 11 kV, and 400 or 230 volt lines. Above 33 kV lines are known as transmission lines and 33 kV or below are known as distribution line. 33 kV, 25 kV, 11 kV, 6.6 kV are HT distribution line and 400 or 230 volt is known as LT lines. Therefore, from this picture, we can easily guess and find out the transmission lines. As the length of electrical transmission lines carrying HV power is generally long enough and it runs through open atmosphere, probability of occurrence of fault in transmission line is much higher than that of indoor substation equipment. Therefore, transmission line requires effective and highly sensitive protection scheme. The most common causes of faults in overhead transmission lines are lightning, partial discharge, discharges uncontrolled, punctured or broken insulators, trees, wind, birds and animals, contaminated insulators, aircraft and car heatings on lines and structure, ice and snow loading, conductor snapping. Common faults, phase 2 earth, phase 2 phase, phase 2 phase 2 earth, 3 phases and 3 phases to earth. Protection of transition lines Overall voltage protection from lightning using lightning arrestor or surge arrestor, overhead grounding or shielding wire, prevent insulator string flashover by using horn gap, LA flashover protection by using a grading ring. Overall current and earth fault protection, distant protection, directional over current and earth fault relay for parallel line protection, backup, non directional over current and earth fault relay 
for radial line protection, backup, carrier current added distance protection for extra HV transmission line. Now we shall discuss about non-directional and directional over current and earth fault relay respectively. This is the connection diagram of a non-directional over current and earth fault relays. Here 50 is definite time over current relay TOC and 51 is instantaneous over current relay. 51N and 50N is that of earth fault relay. Non-directional over current and earth fault relay operates only on city current and does not depend on direction of flow of current. The relay operates due to flowing of fault current on both sides. Watch the picture of a circuit comprises of circuit breaker, CT and relay. When the circuit breaker is made on, power begins to flow through the circuit. During power flowing, a fault, suppose earth fault, is occurred at any point, causes increase of current in the circuit sensed by the CT. CT experiences the excessive flow of current beyond its setting and the CT commands the relay to issue a trip of the circuit breaker. Circuit breaker trips. For non-directional relay, the occurrence of such incidents is same for both directions. Description of settings of such relay is not given here. These are the pictures of two panels rear side view. ANSI code of distance protection is 21 and that of directional earth fault over current relay is 67.
Directional overcurrent and earth fault relay is a modified form of non-directional relay where PT voltage, potential transformer voltage coil is used additionally. The PT voltage acts as directional element. Directional overcurrent protection is used in conjunction with short time overcurrent protection. The choice of forward or reverse directional overcurrent protection and time delays and the time delay setting of short time overcurrent protection helps to protect a power system against short circuit currents that could circulate in forward and reverse direction. Directional protection responds to flow of power in a definite direction with reference to the location of CT and PT. Directional relays respond to the magnitude and direction of power or current applied at their terminal. Directional relay operates when direction of flow of current is same in direction of tripping. Directional overcurrent protection can be applied on a power system where two or more lines running in parallel to increase power availability. Let us consider a part of the 132 kV power system is shown in the picture. Here substation B is getting power from substation A using double circuit parallel lines and 132 kV double circuit lines feeder 1 and feeder 2 is feeding the substation C. The parallel lines between substation B and substation C under consideration is being protected by four circuit breakers controlled by four numbers of overcurrent and earth fault relays R1, R2 and R3, R4. Observing upon the circuit and with common logic, we can guess that time of operation of relays R1 and R2 is 500 millisecond and R3 and R4 is 300 millisecond. Setting of relay R1 and R2 is given at forward direction. Direction of tripping is set towards substation C. That means when direction of tripping will be the same with direction of current flow, the relay will issue a tripping of respective circuit breaker when current will be beyond the setting of CT. Again, relays at substation C set at a direction towards substation B. The direction of tripping of the relays R3 and R4 is in reverse direction with respect to flow of current from substation B. In normal condition, relay R3 and R4 will not issue tripping due to overloading as direction of flow of current is opposite to direction of tripping. But when fault occurs at any feeder, suppose at feeder number 2, instantaneously fault current flows from substation B to fault point 
and R2 issues a tripping of circuit breaker under relay R2 as the direction of flow of current and direction of tripping has become same. On the other hand, a part of fault current flows through circuit 1 via bus and rest part of circuit 2 reaches at fault point in reverse direction. This fault current faces relay R3 in reverse direction does not issue tripping of circuit breaker against the said relay R3. Again, this fault current uninterruptedly reaches at the fault point facing relay R4, where direction of flow of fault current is same as the direction of tripping of the relay and the relay R4 issues a trip of the respective circuit breaker. Now let the fault is on circuit 1 as shown in the figure. For this fault both relay R3 and R4 at bus C will experience the same fault current and as we have to set its time of operation same 300 millisecond both should operate simultaneously but reverse direction of tripping at relay R4 will come forward and stop the tripping of the circuit breaker meant for relay R4. Not only that, relay R2 will also experience same fault current and here direction of tripping and direction of flow of fault current is same thus the relay R2 will issue a tripping of its circuit breaker which can be prevented by setting a more time discrimination at sending and side relays with respect to receiving end. Therefore, time setting at relays R1 and R2 will be kept likely 500 millisecond and that of at relays R3 and R4 is 300 millisecond and such for time discrimination. Due to the fault flow of current through the relay R1 is same in the direction of tripping of relay R1 and the relay R1 issue a tripping of its circuit breaker. As a result, faulty feeder will trip at both ends and rest part remains unaffected. Other protections like distant protection of transmission line is not described here in this video to avoid the lengthiness of this video. A few videos regarding distant protection had been uploaded whose links are given in description box. Please watch these videos too. Thank you.